Today, we're going to look at circular motion with an emphasis on angular velocity. We can get the instantaneous velocity, i.e. the velocity at a point, by drawing a tangent to the circle at that point. We can, of course, repeat this at any point we like around the circle, and it quickly becomes apparent that the velocity is changing constantly, although the magnitude remains fixed. We're now going to move on to angular velocity, which is a measure of how many degrees or radians an object rotating turns through in a given time. This is given the symbol omega, which as you can see is not the same as W. This is defined as being the angle rotated through over the time taken, or perhaps better still, change in the angle over the change in the time. This is normally measured in radians, but not always. Here's a ferris wheel which we're going to use to see why angular velocity is so helpful. I've zoomed in now and added a radius and also assigned a direction of rotation. Now consider two points along that radius that we just added. Therefore we can say that both green blobs have the same angular velocity. It doesn't matter where they are on the radius since they take the same time to go round once. The outer blob clearly has a longer journey than the inner blob because the radius is bigger. And therefore, given that they both take the same time to go around, the outer blob must have a larger magnitude of instantaneous velocity. Therefore, we can conclude that for our two blobs sitting on the same radius, that their angular velocity is the same, but their instantaneous velocity is different depending on how big the radius is. Last thing we wrote down then was that omega equals theta, the angle moved through, divided by the time taken. So remember that in one turn, the complete angle that we've moved through is 2 pi, because there are 2 pi radians in a circle. And if we divide that by t, how long it took to make the circle, then that will be the angular velocity. But remember, small t in this expression is actually called the period period being the time for one turn. We can rewrite this expression as omega equals 2 pi over t, capital T that is, for the period. Of course, don't forget, theta has to be in radians for these formulas to work. Now, hopefully you can recall from earlier work that 1 over the frequency is the same as the period. Such a massively useful formula. Therefore, we can rewrite omega as being equal to 2 pi f. Lastly then, for this video, let's derive a simple expression for the instantaneous velocity. Well, we all know that speed or velocity is distance over time, and we've also seen that in one rotation that distance is 2 pi r. And we also know that the time for one rotation is capital T, the period. Therefore, substituting in speed is distance over time, we quickly get that speed is equal to 2 pi r over the period t. Now earlier we saw that 2 pi over t is equal to omega, as long as t is the period that is. Therefore, the speed at any point is going to be equal to omega r. And this, of course, means we can say that the instantaneous velocity at any point is also equal to omega r. 